By now, I have already been living abroad for more than six years and that too in Netherlands. Well, I moved out of India in 2015 to do my master's in TU Delft in computer science. You might have seen my other videos where I have explained my journey from India to Netherlands. So after I finished my master's for two years, then from 2017 onwards, I'm currently doing this PhD, uh, which you, have, you might have seen many of the videos on this channel. Uh, sharing my experience of doing a PhD and also about different tips about doing PhD, PhD interviews. So hi everyone, uh, my name is Sambit PhD. Actually, that's the name of the channel. So my name is Sambit Praraj. Uh, I have been living in Netherlands for more than six years. I make videos on studying and living in Netherlands, Europe, Germany and different places in Europe and also make some interview sessions for you guys. Those who want to study abroad, just like I did, six years back you always have that question like uh, how can i study and live abroad alone because i got this question from many comments and also many calls that i got from different parents of the students they were very concerned uh, like will my child be able to survive live abroad alone so this video will specifically focus on that where i discuss highlighting the challenges and solutions and the lessons that i also learned by moving to study abroad alone and what I learned uh, by living abroad alone. So let's start with the first point. So the first basic challenge of moving to any new place is adapting with the new locality, people, rules and houses. So you need to know about, for example, like how the municipality works because we have a municipality system here and how you got a BSN number, like just like you have a Aadhaar card in India. So you need to know the basic things because with that you can get access to basic facilities like a bank account, uh, getting your preliminary digital setup, everything, all the uh, benefits, tax benefits, uh, everything. So you need to know about how these things work and also public transport is very important because here it's very uh, advanced so you can use a single card to get access to all the transport by here i mean netherlands so yeah so these are the different things you need to get used to it and i would say take your time don't don't if you have never moved abroad like it was in my case so i moved out of india for the first time so some things like traffic lights rules going to the supermarket there are many new things new experiences sometimes new experiences can be overwhelming so it's always good to take your time, maybe a month or two months, slowly uh, every day or every two days, learn two new things. And I, I, I think also talk more with your peers who arrived at that time or maybe some seniors who have been already living here. And then you will slowly get used to the system. It will take some time, but uh, once you're used to it, it's the same because it's not that difficult. Moving to the second point, so before you move abroad, this is very important. You need to have the right mindset. By right mindset, I mean like uh, you need to make yourself, prepare yourself that when you move abroad, you need to do so many things. It's not like, uh, I mean, if you're in India, if you're in hostel, most of the time you don't cook. So you get food or if you're in a house, then your mother is going to cook there will be someone to clean everything so all these things like cleaning cooking shopping uh, there will be many daily activities everything you need to do and balance it with the main goal for which you move to study abroad is study so uh, that can be challenging sometimes so it's always better to have that mindset some kind of positive open mindset that you are ready to accept new things challenges sudden interruptions sudden challenges sudden problems while managing all these different activities so if you have that mindset i trust me my friends it will be really helpful for you so moving to the third point how to manage time this has been asked by many students be it a phd be it masters or be it a job also so managing time is a very tricky thing and it works differently with different persons so i will give you a narrow perspective of what i felt how i manage time and some of my uh, managing methods might be useful for you so yeah so i would say i would subdivide it into two points one is dividing your tasks into 
relevant subtasks and the second point is doing parallel tasks so you will get a lot of suggestions from people that never paralyze don't do parallel work when you are so i would say when you are doing focused work like studying or doing assignment writing an article uh, you should not do parallel work it hampers your productivity but uh, i have felt when i'm doing non focused work like for example i'm cleaning some utensils dishes and at the same time i have my headphone on so that i can listen to some kind of uh, audio book Uh, so in that case which is kind of a less focused work i feel paralyzing saves time for example another example is like while cooking uh, sometimes i have some things on the gas uh, on the stove and i leave it so like suppose i have four places to cook and at the same time while it is boiling or cooking things that take some time i do other work maybe cleaning the house or uh, go to the bathroom to take a shower so yeah so the, these are some examples so if you do some non focused work in parallel it helps a lot dividing your task to relevant subtasks also helps a lot uh, when you know like how can you like if you have a very big task if you divide it into subtask of maybe doing it in different time slots in the same day or maybe doing it in different days then it helps a lot so moving to the fourth point Uh, which is the main point of this video so how to not feel lonely so there are many tips and advice available floating by nowadays in the digital world so i would say like just build your own community of like minded individuals or buddies i call them buddies so that's a buzzword nowadays uh, so uh, this helps you a lot uh, like it doesn't make you feel left out so you can share a lot of things with them like maybe take advice from them ask help for important problems you can help them out cook something together have some community sessions like cooking or a hiking trip uh, going on some kind of short weekend trips together uh, going to parties whatever you like like you just combine your likelihood your hobbies with your community so you can meet like minded individuals and sometimes during emergency also they help you out so this kind of uh, i mean when you're moving abroad alone so it helps you to fight because once you start feeling in the inner self that you are lonely then sometimes i have heard from people they suffer from depression or the fomo like fear of missing out so i would say try to follow this approach it helps me a lot moving to the last four points let's move to the fifth point so getting above study pressure so you can get above study pressure if you take proper breaks uh, because sometimes you hear people saying like just go slog for 8 hours 10 hours 20 hours continuous but trust me i from my experience i'm telling you if you take breaks after certain time intervals there are many techniques of taking breaks i won't go into that but if you take breaks after uh, maybe a short breaks and then a long break there are different ways to take a break it helps a lot to focus again so during those breaks you can also maybe uh, like suppose you have a short break you can do some kind of other self care hobbies that you have or if you take a long break in weekends you can go cook something paint something depending on your hobbies or maybe travel around go on a short trip one day trip a day trip so what happens is as i said earlier like these kind of activities help you to take some time off from your main focused work and then you have kind of a uh mechanism you develop a mechanism by which you can overcome stress and focus better when you come back to your main task so yeah and on top of that the main thing which you should focus really uh, even if you are able to cook or you are not able to cook is to focus on getting proper food and nutrition this is really really essential because you are only Uh, most of us who is living alone they take care of themselves so no one is going to be telling you all the time like okay you are getting proper vitamins minerals and all these things so you need to take a really good uh, you need to take accountability and check whether you are on track that's really important for a healthy body healthy mind healthy soul okay let's move to the sixth point so talk with your parents 
uh, or if you have some friends close friends openly share your problems uh, if you feel that you feel good you feel better you get some good advice you can talk with them daily there is no limit that you should talk once a week or once a day it's up to you but the, if you keep that communication channel open then i feel that it helps a lot to express yourself openly and also get some kind of feedback from their side and that also creates that social bond that you know like okay if i have something which i cannot think or cannot process then they are going to be there for me always helping me out now moving to the last two points so managing finances for managing finances i will make another video this video is already getting longer so uh, you need to do a really good planning to manage finances i can give you some examples i won't go into the details that will be a separate video so maybe ordering less food learn how to cook uh, so in my case it was not that difficult because i used to cook a bit from india and then here i started um, cooking more and then i mean i was not expert but after two three years cooking i feel that now i'm able to cook a proper meal so by the way you can check my cooking instagram page i have an instagram page which is called sambit swift cooking where i post some cooking pics so yeah so i would say like order less food from outside because buying is always expensive if you cook it's cheaper and while you buy grocery always try to buy something in bulk uh, something suppose you will finish in two months you buy in a week and check out for discounts and offers so these are some of the examples by which you can manage finances although there are many specific tailor-made examples which i will focus in another video so moving to the last point without further ado uh, balancing the temptations these temptations can mean n number of things it can be uh, these are like the urges that you have you you have in your mind so always try to take a step back when you get the urges it's not bad to have the urges but if you cross the limit cross the threshold of those temptations then you can deviate really far from your long-term goal your long-term goal for which you are here so how can you do it well there is no hard and fast rule but what helped me was always take a step back when you have the temptation to think like uh, if i do this then what will be my long term benefit or will it cause any long term harm for me and then you can really make a mental model make assess your your pros and cons so let's take example like temptation can be anything so temptation can be like temptation to get food uh, i mean like buying food suppose you have temptation like okay one day i will try thai one day i will try chinese one day but you don't have that budget uh, that you can spend in a month to buy order food for 10 times or 20 times this can be one temptation another temptation can be uh, in terms of uh, i mean you have so many things around you to distract you so temptation or distraction whatever you can call them i think you will better understand what i mean so i hope that this video helped you to to get an idea about uh, how you move to study abroad alone what are the challenges how i learned from these challenges some tips and advice for you also so thank you for watching this video don't forget to share this video help each other out subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed yet till next video goodbye from netherlands peace